This question is kind of hard for me to explain, mostly because I just kind of see the answer. It's very obvious to me, probably because I know exactly what all these terms mean, right? So to say something is a factor, you've probably done this in algebra two. If you've taken that already, you've got those terms in parentheses uh, when you factor in a, a quadratic equation. That's kind of what we're talking about here. Now they've done some things to mess with us, right? They've taken this K out and, and they've made it a letter instead of a number. The X is kind of in the wrong place, right? Usually the X is at the beginning of those factors, not at the end. Um, plus we get this one over 29, so it looks really scary. Let me just show you the kind of intuitive way I understand it. Um, when I look at this situation, I understand that this is basically going to be a difference of two squares. So dots, you might have heard of, dots factoring, difference of two squares. Now I have to rearrange it. So in my mind, I'm seeing it more like this, 1 over 29 nk squared minus x squared. And I know that when I have difference of two squares, it's kind of more, usually it's in this form. It's like um, uh, a squared minus b squared, and that becomes a plus b, a minus b, right? So hopefully you've seen something like that. That's kind of what we're doing here. So let me let me do that then, right? So what would we do? Well, we'd have the two factors, and we'd have an x and an x and a minus a plus and a minus. And so I'm like, okay, that k then is going to get factored. But if k minus x is a factor, which is this, right? So this is the k minus x that they're telling me is a factor. The only way that would work is if k plus x was also a factor, right? So I don't, I basically, I'm looking at this one over 29 and I'm like, this is bad. This is messing me up, right? So how do I kill that, right? Because if I can kill that off, then this is just basic difference of two squares. It's literally this, right? So how would I do it? And I look at the answers and, and sure enough, if I put 29 in, well, one over 29 times 29 is just one. So then this is really just 1kx squared. So then, you know, I could put a 1 in here. It doesn't matter. But like, that's what's going on is I'm taking the square root of the 1. It's very simple. Um, so to me, that is very intuitive. I kind of just understand very quickly what topics I'm dealing with, what this equation is doing, what they're going for here. So part of that might just be a good algebra sense. Uh, part of that also might be a good SAT and PSAT sense, right? Like, I know what they ask and difference of two squares is, is an old favorite for the PSAT and SAT because it's one of those things that everybody learns when they learn factoring, but you forget about it because it's kind of a weird way of factoring. It's a weird situation. And so it's not reinforced as much as the normal kind of factoring you do where you're, you got to find numbers that multiply to one thing and add to another. So, so there's that. I, you know, I don't know. But let me give you some alternatives here. Um, let's use it as an opportunity to kind of play with Desmos. One thing we can do is we can just put it in basically as written. So negative x squared plus 1 over 29 and then um, n. Uh, I guess I'll just put an n. Yeah, let's just do it. n, uh, k, let's put the k, and then squared. So it has a problem with that, right? It's like, what, what do you even mean? What's this n? What's this k? So it gives me this opportunity to add a slider. So I can do that. And basically what that does is it picks numbers for me for n and k. And, and that's okay because, first of all, we're solving for n. So we're, there is a right number there. But also um, it lets me play with the numbers, right? So this slider lets me experiment. And as I do, the, the, the a parabola that results is going to change, right? So what I want to do is, first of all, I want to pick a number for k that's just like manageable. So let's just do, let's just do 2. And sometimes it's easier to just type it than it is to deal with it that way. So we'll do two. Um, oh, actually, yeah, yeah, let's do, yeah, let's do two. Let's do two. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, so what this means then is that I want to think about what a factor would be when I have a graph of a parabola. So with the reason we factor, remember, is to get the x-intercepts, those, those values where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So basically, it's telling me that 2 minus x is a factor now, because I've made up k as being 2. So 2 minus x is a factor, which means what's the x-intercept that goes with that? That would be x equals 2, right? What would make that thing 0? But if I look at this, I can tell that x is not 2, right? Like, I can see where these, these intercepts are. And they're not at 2 or negative 2, right? So they're at these random numbers. So that's because my n is not what it's supposed to be. 
So I could try different things. So let me just show you what happens when we pick the right answer here. And I'm just going to type 29. And we can see we have a 2 and a negative 2. So the negative 2 I don't care as much about, but the 2 is very nice. So there you go. That is proving in a more conceptual algebraic way that 29 is the value of n because when I tell my Desmos to put it in, I see that I get a situation that satisfies the conditions in the question. It, it's, it's giving me the x-intercept that I want. Now, if I were to switch it and do a negative two, negative 29, look, look what happens. I don't even have any x-intercepts now. It's below, right? So it's not giving me those x-intercepts that I want. And I could do the same thing for like um, a fraction. You don't need to, you can just type whatever you want here, one over 29, right? So that does have x-intercepts, I believe, but they're really small. And so we could just try, you know, I'm not going to try B and waste your time, but there you go. That's basically what it's doing. So I think that that's also very, very hard. I don't, I don't really know what to tell you much more about this question. If you've got a better way to solve it and think about it, please put it in the comments because for me, it's so intuitive that that's what this is. And, and even still, I think that any other solution is going to require us to know the word factor and understand how that works. I think we can do something here where we maybe turn this entire thing by plugging and arithmetizing for X and making a number for X and then making that whole X minus uh, K minus X its own number uh, and then see if that number is a factor of what's going on in the other piece. Um, I don't want to do that though because I think it's going to confuse you, but I think that is an arithmetize option. If someone has a good, nice, succinct way to describe that, go for it. But this is just a hard question, and, th and this gets to something else we need to think about for the PSAT and the SAT, is when you get to the back half of the hard module, there's going to be lots of hard questions, but they're not all hard in the same way. So this might be hard in a way where you're just completely lost. Maybe questions 20, 21, and 22 are hard in a way that you actually can use. You, you maybe have a strategy or Desmos or whatever that's going to help you get through it. So don't feel obligated to do the questions in order. Skip around, especially when you get like kind of past question 15. Look for the ones that are the best use of your time. Remember that our main goal is just to maximize the correct answer. So the more right you get, the better. And you might have to just guess randomly on this. And even if you did, you'd still have a 25% chance of guessing right. There's no penalty for wrong answers. So put something and hope for the best.